we're going to talk about congenital lung abnormalities. Uh, you may ask why we're talking about this as an adult radiologist, but we do see these in adults, um, particularly the, uh, we'll get into the bronchial atresias and sequestrations in particular. Um, and it's important to know about these for two reasons. Uh, one, they can sometimes simulate malignancy. And two, uh, these patients may develop recurrent infections and require uh, surgical resection. So it's important to recognize that and refer them properly and also help with pre-surgical planning. Um, so just to overview before we jump in, um, the congenital lung abnormalities we're going to talk about are bronchial atresia, uh, congenital pulmonary airway malformations, sequestrations, um, and then rarer things, congenital lobar hyperinflation, uh, pulmonary artery agenesis, and scimitar syndrome. So let's get started with uh, bronchial atresia. So bronchial atresia is thought to occur because uh, there is uh, some sort of obstruction of a, uh, a bronchus within the lung that does no longer communicates with the bronchial tree. Um, it's believed to be some sort of um, congenital or a very early insult, um, potentially vascular insult. And what happens is that the distal lung uh, has air trapping because air can get in through collateral ventilation, but it cannot get out. So we can here we can see in the right lower lobe a large area of hyperinflated lung with decreased vascular markings and decreased density here. And uh, there's a little bit of sort of post-obstructive uh, tree and bud nodular area at the right base there. But in this region, we can then look for a central obstructed bronchus. And you can see here that this bronchus is um, partially fluid filled, partially air filled, but it does not communicate with the central bronchial tree. There's like a little membrane here uh, between this bronchus and the central bronchial tree. In some cases, you will see that the bronchus is totally opacified with mucus, so-called bronchocele or mucocele. In other cases, there may be some air within the bronchus, like in this case here. We'll take a look at another example. So here within the left lower lobe, let's see if I can adjust the windowing a little bit. We have an area of air trapping, hyperlucency. And the central, again, in this case, this happens to be an aerated bronchus here. Um, but you can see that it does not communicate with the central bronchial tree. There's the bronchus, and it just sort of abruptly ends here. Um, so if you see an area of air trapping, you want to look for an obstructing lesion or a bronchial atresia, like in this case. And the key would be to find an either mucus impacted or aerated bronchus that does not communicate with the bronchial tree. And we'll show some examples later, but um, there's, there are often overlap cases where you've got um, multiple different congenital abnormalities. So you may see bronchial atresia in association with, for example, sequestration. And we'll see some of that later. Now the next entity I want to talk about is CPAM, congenital pulmonary airway malformation, formerly known as CCAM, uh, which stood for congenital cystic adenomatoid malformation. Um, that term is no longer preferred because it doesn't always match the actual pathology. Um, so there's multiple different types and we're not going to get into all the classification and or even the association with pleural pulmonary blastoma, which is uh, finding only in infancy. Um, but we'll just look in the adult. We occasionally do see these, although they're rather uncommon to find in adults. You can see here a large area of cystic change in the right lower lobe. And actually, the way the patient initially presented, this lesion was fluid filled and simulated a tumor. You can see here. Um, but all of the internal attenuation was fluid, and it seemed like there were vessels passing through it. Uh, so we suspected this was some kind of congenital abnormality, and we actually performed an MRI. And the MRI here demonstrates the internal, sorry about that, the internal fluid attenuation or intensity here on the T2-weighted images. 
and post contrast imaging. demonstrates thin septal enhancement but no nodular enhancement and as I said the patient um, was believed to be infected at this time actually and the patient then came back for repeat CT um, and all of that fluid had basically resolved but this patient did then go on to resection um, because this lesion was obviously predisposed to super infection and that's again a common theme in these cases that these lesions since they don't have normal bronchial anatomy are predisposed to super infection and therefore that's an indication for surgical resection. Now uh, moving on to sequestration. So sequestration is uh, defined as arterial systemic arterial supply to the lung parenchyma. There are two different kinds. So here we have a large mass like lesion here that you can see has systemic arterial supply. Here's an aorta aortic feeding vessel. Um, so systemic arterial supply, there are two kinds of sequestration, intralobar and extralobar. Intralobar sequestrations are, exist within the normal pleural covering of the whichever lung they're in, um, and uh, they have pulmonary venous drainage. Extralobar sequestrations have a separate pleural covering uh, and will have uh, systemic venous drainage, the uh, extra lobar sequestrations can even occur in the upper abdomen. Um, and either kind of sequestration can have systemic feeding uh, vessels from the upper abdomen. So it's important to look for feeding vessels in the upper abdomen. In all these cases, sometimes they'll even have multiple feeding vessels. Uh, this case does not have abdominal feeders. Uh, but you can see this lesion, very mass-like, but has systemic arterial feeding supply. Um, and in this case, this was also, this was actually an extra lobar sequestration. And if I can find the um, MRI was done and shows that there is actually a draining vein to the azagous vein, uh, which you can see here, apologies for the low resolution, um, but this is a draining uh, vein to the azagous system here. We'll look at another example. Now, most sequestrations that we see are intralobar. So here again, we have a mass-like lesion in the left lower lobe. There's aortic feeding artery. And we can follow multiple pulmonary veins back to the normal pulmonary vein. So this is an intralobar sequestration. You see a little bit of mucus impacted bronchi in the center of this lesion as well. Another example. Here we have actually atherosclerosis of the feeding artery, which is an abdominal feeder. You can see it arises from the celiac axis and then comes through the hiatus and feeds uh, into this lesion in the left lower lobe. This is a, an overlap with the bronchial atresia. So you can see central mucus impacted bronchus and air trapping in this lesion. Now you've noticed that many of these congenital lesions are occur in the lower lobes, and in general that's true, um, particularly the uh, bronchial atresias and the sequestration. Sequestrations almost exclusively occur in the lower lobes. Um, the congenital pulmonary airway malformation, CPAMs, do not necessarily have a lobar predominance. And we'll see uh, a little bit the congenital lobar hyperinflation uh, tends to have upper lobe predominance. Take a look at that abdominal feeding vessel again. So there's the atherosclerotic vessel, and you can see it comes through the hiatus and arises from the celiac artery right there. And one more example. Within the left lower lobe, we have air trapping, and 
and some abnormal tubular structures, you can see that there's a feeding artery arising from the aorta right here, and also a fluid attenuation structure in the left lower lobe that is a bronchial atresia, and of course the air trapping there. Again, feeding artery from the aorta, and there's the mucus impacted bronchial atresia in the center. Now switching to our rarer entities, we'll look at a case of congenital lobe or hyperinflation. The left upper lobe is the most common site, and you can see in this baby gram that the left upper lobe is hyperinflated. And moving to the CT, we can see that the left upper lobe is hyperinflated. There's a paucity of vascular structures. There's con obviously contralateral mediastinal shift. Um, the lower lobes are normal. So this is, again, an abnormality of pulmonary uh, development. Left upper lobe is the most common lobe involved. Um, and then the followed by the right middle and upper lobes, the lower lobes are almost never involved. Um, and this is really almost exclusively seen in infancy. All right, a couple other rare entities. So this is pulmonary artery agenesis. We'll start with the lung windows where you can see that the right lung is small. It has sort of abnormal vascularity in some areas of scarring. and some subtle thickening. It looks like kind of a scarred lung. Um, and when we look on the mediastinal windows, you can see that there's a normal main and left pulmonary arteries. Uh, the right pulmonary artery is entirely absent, and all the vascularity to the right lung is fed from bronchial collaterals. You can see some of the bronchial collaterals here extending into the right hilum. And finally, we'll talk about scimitar. Um, it really more properly goes into a discussion of anomalous pulmonary venous return, but I've included it here because the lung itself also is abnormal. So here are, let's look at two examples. Um, this one is shown on MRI. This patient happens to have a malignancy in their mediastinum, um, but we can see this abnormal vessel here. First of all, the right lung is a little bit small. This abnormal vessel here, which drains to the IVC, this is an almost pulmonary venous return. You can see that the pulmonary artery circulation is normal in this case. And here's a CT, perhaps a little bit easier to, sorry about that. Um, this patient also has a history of malignancy in the past, but we see a large abnormal vessel in the right lung. Um, so normal pulmonary arterial supply, but here are the pulmonary veins in the right lung. And if we follow them down, that's the right inferior pulmonary vein. If we follow this structure down, it drains into the inferior vena cava. And notice that there is no pulmonary venous drainage um, from the left atrium on the right side. Normal left-sided pulmonary venous return for us. Look at the coronal here. Again, you can see oops, here's that large scimitar draining vein which drains to the inferior vena cava and absent right uh, sided pulmonary veins drain to the left atrium. And in this case, that right lung is relatively normal, but it may be smaller in size. And another term for this is congenital vivum lobar syndrome. All right, so that's a quick overview of the congenital lung abnormalities. Again, the ones to really think about are bronchial atresia, which presents with air trapping, and the central uh, either mucus impacted or aerated bronchus that does not connect to the normal bronchial tree. Uh, and then sequestrations where you have systemic arterial supply to uh, 